What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to do a Python 101 on three different libraries that I think are very useful for machine learning or data science in general. The first one is Pandas, the second one is NumPy, and then the third one is Matplot. And I think all Python users should know them because they are very basic. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I have Jupyter Notebook opened up an empty folder. I'm just using Jupyter Notebook for the tutorial purposes, but you can use any of your favorite IDEs such as PyCharm or VS Code if you want to. And before we do anything, let's go over the data files that we have that we're going to use for the tutorial. So the first one is data CSV file that is pretty simple, that we have a header that specifies what the columns are and then some random numbers. And the data points are separated by commas. And then the data2.csv the data points are exactly the same except it doesn't have a header and they are bar separated instead of comma and then the third one is temperatures.csv that just has two columns of data one is the month and then the second one is the temperature in fahrenheit except it doesn't have the header either and then finally we're going to have a 2d data sample where we have x1 that is one column and then x2 and then we have a class that specifies whether the data point belongs to class 0 or class 1. All the data files that we're going to use are pretty simple. And now let's create a new notebook and then we can do some coding on it. So the first library that we're going to look at is pandas. So we're going to import that and then we're going to look at what version of pandas we're using. All right, so we're using 1.1.0. And then first thing first, we're going to read in one of the data files that we're going to have, and then we're going to create a data frame with it. Because our data files are CSV files, so we're going to specify read CSV. And since our data file is in the same directory as our notebook file, so we can just type in the name directly. And this is what the data frame looks like. And as we can see, it takes the first row in our data file as our header automatically. This is a good feature if our data files have an header, but what happens if it doesn't? Just like what we have in our data to the files, and it has different separators between the data points. So what we can do here is specify a new data file, and then in our separator, we can specify what is separated by and then we can specify header equal to none because we do not have any headers in our data2.csv just showed earlier and now we got a new data frame if we don't have this header equal to none uh, what it does is that it will just take the first row as our header which is not what we want and even though we have the data frame right now but it doesn't have a header but what do we do to give it a header that we want to specify it to. That's pretty simple. We can just do something like this. Okay, so now we have learned how to read the data from our data files. And now let's do some inspection on it. The first thing we can do is to check the shape of our data frame. And what that means is our data frame has eight columns. I mean, eight rows and four columns, as you can see here. I know this is only a simple data in the real world. You're probably going to have a lot more data, more than just eight rows. You may have like thousands of rows. But what if you just want to take a look at the first few rows to see how it looks like? How can you do that? You can just do data frame, head, and then specify how many rows of the data frame you want to take a look at. Let me just do three. And that just selects the first three rows of our data frame to show. Another thing we can do is we can just take a look at what our columns are or our headers to see what they are. And that's how you do it. And as you can see, this is an object. But if you want to make it a list, and all you need to do here is just do list like this. And that's how you make it become a list. And one thing you may notice in our data frame is that we have some null data here in our data frame. What if I want to do a statistics on it to see how many null values we have in each of the columns? And the way to check that is 
So in the age column, we have no null values, but in the height and weight columns, we have one and two respectively, and that is correct. And now let's see what we're gonna do with the null values. One way to do it is to drop the rows that contains any of the null values. And the way to do that is, and as you can see, all the rows that contains null values are dropped from our data frame here. But one thing to note here is though, it doesn't really change the data frame itself. It just create a new instance for you. So if I do data frame again, it should have all the original values here. So what can you do if you want this to be persistent? What you can do here is you can define a new data frame and just do, there's a typo there. And now you have data frame number two that doesn't have any null values. So dropping the rows is one way to do with the null values. So what are other ways you can do it? Another way that you can deal with the null values is to fill it with a specific number, let's say negative one. And the way to do that is, and now all the null values are replaced with negative one here. But in real world machine learning applications, filling the null values with a specific number is not really a good practice because you're artificially modifying the data. A better way to do it is just to drop the rows if you don't have a lot of null values. But of course, it depends case by case. But I'm just showing you the two common ways to do with null values here. And doing this doesn't change our original data frame either. It still has the same values in our data frame object. And now next, let's get some statistics about our data frame. So what we can do is, so this is gonna give us some of the basic stats about our data frame, such as how many non-null values we have in each of the columns, what is the mean, standard deviation, the minimum, etc. And one thing you may notice is that it only has the stats for the three columns that are numbers. The is healthy column, which is yes and no, it doesn't show up in our stat table because it's not a number column. So how can we get the stats for the non-number columns? So the way to do it is this. So this is the capitalized letter O. Don't ask me why the letter O because I have no idea. You just have to remember it. So if I do this, it's giving me the stats for the non-numerical column. And now let's look at the operations that we can do on the, on the data frame. So the first thing is how can we copy the entire data frame and assign that to a different variable? So the way to do it is, so this one creates a new data frame that's exactly the same as our original one and assign that to variable data frame three. And it's gonna look exactly the same. What about filtering? What if I only want to get the rows where it's healthy is yes. And the way to do it is, this and it's only giving me all the rows that has is healthy equal to y and it works the same for other conditions as well let me do one more example here let's say the height is not equal to 64 and it should skip row number five and there's no row number five here and now let's replace some of the values with a different number because in machine learning, everything has to be numeric. So this is not gonna work. So let's say that we want to replace Y with one and then N with zero. How can we do that? Okay, so now the Y becomes one and then the N becomes zero. And again, this doesn't change anything about the original data frame. It just creates a new instance. So we have to assign that to a different variable. Let's say data frame two. And it's exactly the same here. Okay, so now that let's say that we only want to show the rows from row number two to row number four. How can we do that? So all we need to do here is this. And we get exactly three rows. What about I only want the first three rows? And we do it like this, the colon. Remember that the second index is always not inclusive. Okay, so now that let's say that we only want to select one of the columns, let's say the height column, how can we do this? So we do it like 
this. And we get one column only. And as we can see, this is an object. This is not an array. But what if I just want to get an array of it? What can I do? I just need to do this to get all the values. Okay, so that's pretty much it for all the basics for pandas. And now let's move on to NumPy. So let's import that. So the first thing that we're going to look at is, let's say that we want to get a min value of this array. How can we do this? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign this value to a new variable. Let's say just call it x. And then we're going to use NumPy, use the mean to do this. Oh, it has a non value here, so let's drop that. And now let's do this again. And we get a mean value. Okay, so that's pretty simple for a 1D array. But what if now that we have a 2D array where we have both the height and the weight, how can we do this? So we're going to do something like this, data frame 4. And we just need to select both the height and weight. And remember, we need to use double brackets for here. And then we're going to do dot values. And let's see how it looks like. And now we got a 2D array. And remember, all these operations doesn't change anything about data frame 2. It's still the same thing as before. And here you may notice one thing is the index that is not continuous. It goes from 0, 1, and then 3, 6, and 7. And let's do a re-indexing on this first. And now you have a continuous indexing here from 0 to 4. And now let's say that in machine learning, you want the first three columns, age, height, and weight, to be our input, which is x. And then the last column is healthy to be our output, which is y. So how can we extract the data from our data frame and put that into our x and y variables accordingly? And this is how to do it. Okay, so now we have to find x and y. This is how x looks like. So it's basically all these values here. And then this is one y looks like. Oh, there's a typo here. It should be the frame too. All right, that looks good now. Okay, so that is it for NumPy for now. But if there's more topic you want me to cover, comment down below, and then I'll create a new video for them. And now let's move on to plotting. And we're gonna use matplot for that, so let's import that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import the data or to read the data. We're going to use the temperature data that we looked at before. Remember that it doesn't have a header. And this is how it looks like. And now let's give it a header or columns. So the first column is month. And then the second column is temperature in F. And now it has an header. And now let's extract the month data and the temperature data into X and Y so that it's easier for us to plot. Let's see how it looks like first. Mm, we don't want the object, we only want the values. Okay, so now looks good. Same thing for Y. So the easiest part to do is a scatter plot. So let's do that first. That's pretty simple. That's all we need to do here. And it looks nice. But what if we want a line plot? And now we got a line plot. And now let me show you how to make it prettier because this doesn't look really good. So we want it to be a line plot. But then let's add some text to it. Add a grid. And then we can limit the x and y minimum and maximum value. So let's say the y limit, we know that it can only start from 1 and ends at 12. And then the y limit, it can start from 20 and ends at 100. And here we can overlay a scatter plot on top of it so that we can see the data point on top of a line graph. Let's make it red. And there we go. Now we got a much nicer graph right here. Okay, so that's pretty simple for an X and Y graph. 
But now let's do a prod on classifications where we have a 2D data set like we have here, where we have x1, x2, and then we have the class of 0 and 1. And the way to do that is, so let's read it in first. It's an error. Oh, panda. This is how it looks like. And now let's extract x and y values. So x is data frame, x1, x2, and we only want the values here. There we go. Let's make sure that it looks good first. Okay, so it looks good to me. And now let's make our plot using the data. So the first thing is we're going to define the ratio for our graph. And then we're going to create a scatter plot using the x1 and x2 data. So the color is red. And we want the shape of the marker to be square. And then label, just label it 0, class 0. And then we want the color to be blue. And then the marker to be circle. And we're just going to label that 1. And now let's add more stuff to it. First one is the X label. I just call the X axis to be X1. Fun size, let's do 12. And then the Y label, let's just call it X2. Fun size 12 as well. And then let's set the title. Sample data, fun size 12 as well. And then our legend, where we're gonna put that. Let's put it on the upper right corner. And then finally, let's give it a grid. Okay, so that is everything. Let's see how it looks like. So I think that looks good. So we have the X axis that represents the X1 value and then the Y axis to be the X2 value. Uh, so let's say that this is row number one that has a x1 value of 0 and then x2 value of 4.5 and then class 0. So 0, 4.5 and then class of 0 and then the same thing for all other points. So each point represents one row in our data table and that looks pretty good. And this is it everyone. If you'd like me to cover more topics, comment down below and I hope you have learned something today. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.